Chapter Eighteen of the Young Woman's Guide to Excellence by William A. Alcott. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. R read by Bria Snow. Chapter Eighteen: System. There is hardly anything which the majority of our young women hate, frugality and economy and the study of themselves, perhaps excepted, so much as system. In this respect, a few of our best schools have, within a few years, attempted something, and in a few instances, with success. I could mention several schools for females whose teachers have done much more good by the habits of order and system they have inculcated and endeavoured to form than by the sciences they have taught. The tendency of this excellent feature of a few of our institutions is, however, pretty effectually counteracted by the general feeling of the public that the school is but a place of painful though necessary restraint and that when it is over study is over and with it all the system which had been either inculcated or practised and though not a few who have been thus compelled to live by system for two or three years see plainly its excellent effects and both they and their parents acknowledge them still the school is no longer terminated then everything of the kind is very likely to become as though it had never been so long however as home is home and all the associations therewith are as delightful as they are now and so long as the greater number of our families live at random regarding order as constraint and method and system as slavery just so long will the feelings of the young of each rising generation revolt at everything like order and system and though for the sake of peace as well as other and various reasons they may be willing to conform to both for a time yet will they sigh internally for the hour when their bondage shall cease and the day of their emancipation arrive it is not in human nature to look back to scenes and customs and methods if methods they deserve to be called where all is at random of early life without a fondness for and an inward desire to return to them and there are few so hardened as not to do it whenever an opportunity occurs how important then how supremely so is right education how important to sow in the earliest years the seeds of a love of order and system how important to young women especially that this work should not be deferred since if it is so it is most likely to be deferred for ever i know full well that here and there a housekeeper convinced in her conscience that she can do vastly more for herself and others as well as do it better by means of system than without it attempts something like innovation upon the usual random course which prevails about her she resolves to have her hours of labour her hours of recreation and her hours of reading and visiting she believes life is long enough for all the purposes of life she is resolved to be systematic on sabbath and weekdays in the common details of the family in dress and in regard to the hours of rising meals and rest but she has a herculean task to accomplish Notice small part of which is to bring her husband and the other members of her family to cooperate with her yet amid every discouragement she perseveres and at length succeeds is not such a victory worth securing let the young woman who has such a person as i have just described for her mother rejoice in it she can never be too grateful not only to her mother but to god her life is likely to be of thrice the usual value. Our daughters who are blessed with such mothers may be as polished cornerstones in a temple, worthy of themselves, of those who educate them, and of God. But let not those who have been less fortunate in respect to maternal training and influence utterly despair. Convinced of the general correctness of the views here advanced, and desirous of entering on the work of reform, let them take courage and begin it immediately. Though the mother, by her influence in the early formation of character, is almost omnipotent, she is not quite so. Though the Ethiopian could not change his skin, nor the leopard his spots, still it is not utterly impossible for those to do well 
who have been long accustomed to do evil. What has been done, you know, can be done. Make this maxim your motto, and go forward in the work of self-education. But remember to begin, in the first place, with the smaller matters of life, and to conquer in one point or place of action before you begin with another. And lastly, remember not to rely wholly on your own strength. You are indeed to work, and to work with all your might, but it is always God that worketh in you, when anything effectual is accomplished in the way of improvement. End of chapter 18